It's a practice exercise from page 129 of the textbook. We're going to do an acid-base reaction between phosphorus acid and potassium hydroxide. We're going to write a molecular equation and then a net ionic equation. So the first thing we want to do before we write these equations is figure out which products are going to form. In order to figure out what products form, it's helpful to break apart the reactants into ions. So since we have an acid, we should see that the acid breaks apart into H+, that's what makes it an acid, and then PO3, 3 minus, and our potassium hydroxide, K+, plus, and OH-. Minus. Since this is an acid-base reaction, we know that water is going to be one of our products, and water forms from the combination of H+, plus and OH-, minus. so our other product is going to be formed from the potassium and the phosphite ion. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this equation. We're going to start with our reactants. We have H3PO3, which we know is aqueous, that is reacting with KOH, which we also know is aqueous. We know that one of our products is K3PO3. We know that by checking the charges, you need three potassium ions to balance the charge on the phosphate ion. We also want to think about if this is solid or aqueous. So thinking about the solubility rules, we should remember that all alkali metals are soluble. So this is going to be a soluble compound, meaning it gets aqueous after it. And then we know since this is an acid-base reaction, we are going to be forming water. And water is a pure liquid, so it gets an L. The next thing we want to do is balance this reaction. So we want to think about what's going on with the atoms here. So I can see that there are three potassium atoms on the product side, but only one on the reactant side. So that's going to get a coefficient of three. Looking at the phosphite, I should see that there's one phosphate there, one phosphite there, which means that is already balanced. So the next thing I want to think about is what's going on with my hydrogens and my hydroxides. So I can see that there are three hydrogen atoms here, three hydroxides here, three hydrogens and three hydroxides should make three waters. So now I have a balanced molecular equation. The next thing I'm going to write is a net ionic equation. But before I do the net ionic, I like to write my complete ionic equation. and then I can cross out the spectator ions to make the net ionic. In order to write the complete ionic, anything that's a strong electrolyte, anything that completely dissociates in solution, I'm going to write as its individual ions. So the first substance I have, the H3PO3, the phosphorus acid, that is not a strong electrolyte. That is a weak acid, it's a weak electrolyte. So when I write the complete ionic equation, I'm actually gonna leave that all together. So I'm not going to break that apart into ions because it is not a strong electrolyte. Now the next substance I have, the potassium hydroxide, that's an ionic compound that is a strong electrolyte. So I do want to write the individual ions there. So I've got three aqueous potassium ions and I have three aqueous hydroxide ions. On the product side, I've got the, that potassium phosphite, that again is an ionic compound, that's a strong electrolyte, so I'm going to write that as the three individual aqueous potassium ions and the phosphite ion. And then I have the water molecule. The water is not an electrolyte, it's a molecular compound, so I just write in the three water. Since this is a complete ionic, and I ultimately want to write a net ionic, what I need to do is identify spectator ions so that I can cancel them out. So in order to do my net ionic, I want to identify any ions that don't participate in this reaction. So any ions that stay exactly the same before and after. And the only spectator I see is the potassium ion. That potassium ion is an ion on the reactant side, it's an ion on the product side, so it's a spectator. That means everything else becomes part of my net ionic equation. So let's rewrite that.
So this is my net ionic equation. And if you look at it, everything is still balanced. Everything is where it should be. It's just not showing my spectator ions. And again, I think the easiest way to write a net ionic equation is to write your molecular equation, so completely balanced, then do your complete ionic, cross out your spectator ions, and then get your net ionic equation. Remembering that when you write your complete ionic and your net ionic, the only compounds you write as ions are those that are strong electrolytes, those that completely dissociate when you put them in solution.